Hello everyone, I'm the Saxy Gamer. Today we're here for yet another Civilization VI in-depth video, where today we'll be taking an in-depth look at religion, which is something that is a little bit complicated. It's actually not as bad as people may uh, may think it is, but uh, without further ado, let's get right into things. Um, so whenever we're talking about religion, I consider there to be like three main parts of the uh, of, of religion in Civ VI, and the first one is founding your religion, you know, getting your great prophet and founding your religion. Um, probably one of the most difficult parts of religion for a lot of people. Uh, so we'll be going over that. Um, step two is is to choose your beliefs. There are multiple types of beliefs, and they all do a bunch of things, so we'll be talking about that. And step three is spreading your religion, which is where most of the in-depthness about religion comes from. Um, so without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about, you know, uh, the first step, so founding our religion. So before you even found your religion in Civ 6, what you're going to do first is you're going to found a pantheon. And what a pantheon can do is it is essentially your first religious belief. And at least with myself, I, I often find that the Pantheon kind of sets the direction of my religion, like what I want to do with it. Um, so maybe, you know, if I pick up Earth Goddess, I'll be going for like a faith game. If I pick up like Divine Spark, I'll be going for like science or culture or something like that. Um, so your Pantheon can really just help um, either, you know, direct you towards a, a religious game or, you know, help you augment a different type of game. Um, so some, so like, just a few of the Pantheons that I find to be particularly useful here. Uh, we have Divine Spark, which provides plus one great person point for all holy sites, campuses, and theater squares. Um, this can be useful in a lot of situations. Uh, the holy site one uh, makes it so that you will get uh, an additional great profit point, which can make it a lot easier to get your, uh, your great profit earned and found your religion. And then the ones for uh, campuses and theater squares are just nice if you're going for science and culture and you're using uh, religion to kind of augment your game because that's just going to allow you to get, you know, more of those great people. Uh, you can get more, I think it, I think for theater squares it gives more great writer points. So you'll be able to get great, great writers nice and easily. And for the campuses, you know, you'll be getting those great scientists. Maybe you can get the ones that provide extra science, uh, like Hypatia or Isaac Newton, or I forget what the other one is that provides science to universities. Um, but Divine Spark can be useful for helping you use your religion um, to kind of, you know, help another victory type. Um, in addition, we also have Earth Goddess, which provides plus one faith from tiles with charming or better appeal. And Earth Goddess is pretty much insane if you're going religion. If you're going to go for a religious game, I highly recommend Earth Goddess. Um, the other one that's really good that you can use if someone has already taken Earth Goddess, um, because the AI does like to take Earth Goddess a lot, is uh, God. I think it's, it's either Goddess or God of the Harvest. Um, which provides faith equal to uh, the yields of a chop. Um, so that combined with Magnus can get you a lot of faith, um, which can help just, you know, spread your uh, religion in the early game whenever you're going to be using Magnus to maybe rush a few wonders. You can get a bunch of faith, spam out a few missionaries, and spread your religion faster than other people. Uh, but Earth Goddess, it's just really nice for getting a ton of faith output, helping you buy those missionaries and apostles. Um, so I highly recommend going Earth Goddess if you're going for a religion-focused game. Um, in addition, we have God of the Forge, which provides plus 25% production to ancient and classical military units. Um, I really like God of the Forge if I'm going to go for something early aggression. So, you know, say I'm playing like Shaka or Genghis Khan or someone of the sort, uh, I would pick up God of the Forge and then, you know, go and spam out some units, take a few cities, and have a good time. Um, normally with most uh, civs that you're going to be getting God of the Forge with, you're probably not going to be playing a religious game unless you're going maybe... Um, like uh, Yadviga or something like that that's going to go for like religion domination or, you know, any anybody that could do that. Um, most of the time, like, the Pantheon is where you'll stop if you get God of the Forge, but it is quite a good Pantheon nonetheless. Um, so let's move on now and talk about how we actually earn and found our religion, and let's talk about Great Prophets. So Great Prophets in Civ 6 are kind of like your ticket into a religion, because Great Prophets are, well, they're used to found your religion. And you uh, you will uh, earn a Great Prophet once you reach 60 Great Prophet points, and there are a limited number of Great Prophets based on the size of the map that you're playing on. So if you're playing on dual size map, there's going to be 2, Tiny, 3, Small, 4, Standard, 5, Large, 6, and Huge, 7. Um, so pretty much the, the, uh, the larger map size you play on, the relatively easier it is going to be to earn a great profit because, you know, there's a lot more that can be taken. Of course, there is more competition, though, but, you know, um, it, it might vary based on who, what sieves are in the game. Um, so there are multiple ways that you can earn great profit points, though. Um, so some sources are holy sites. It's just having a holy site provides plus one. And then if you have divine spark, you get plus one more from every holy site. And I believe if you're the suzerain of Stockholm, you'll get plus one more. So you can get up to plus three if you're running just, you know, you have a holy site, divine spark, and you're the suzerain of Stockholm, you'll be getting plus three from all your holy sites. Um, shrines provide plus one, uh, temples provide plus one, Revelation, the uh, the policy card, provides plus two. 
Um, so that's one I would, de would definitely recommend running, um, especially if, you know, you're able to run it um, before all the profits have been taken. Uh, that's that that's really, you know, that's most applicable to Poland, you know, because they can they can run that card super early on. Um, but uh, we also have Exodus of the of the uh, Evangelists, which is the Golden Age, uh, the Golden Age dedication that provides plus four. Um, so if you're going to get Exodus of the uh, of of the Evangelists or Evangelists, whatever it is, um, I probably wouldn't recommend you know going for this strictly because of the Great People points. Because if you're playing on higher difficulties, chances are by the time you even reach the Classical Era, all of the profits are going to be taken. So I don't find it to be too useful for the Great People points. But um, like aside from that, like the, the the actual like bonuses from it are pretty are like super good because I, I think it gives all your missionaries plus one spread and additional movement as well. So um, I do recommend it for that, but probably not for the Great People points. So I would not re uh, like I wouldn't rely on uh, on on that ability. Um, to get your great profits, though. Um, and in addition, we also have Holy Sight Prayers, which provides a burst of points when completed. I'm not exactly sure how many. It might be based on the, how much production you put into the Holy Sight Prayers, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, but Holy Sight Prayers, um, I would definitely recommend if if it if you're not 100% certain that you're going to be able to get a, get a great profit because, you know, maybe the AI have like three or four points and you only have like one or two. Um, just run some Holy Sight Prayers, uh, those those few bursts, it, like, you'll probably be able to finish two Holy Sight Prayers, and that should get you up to your great profit, um, in addition to, you know, the points that you have per turn. So, um, if you're ever struggling to get great profits, build your Holy Sight and just immediately start running Holy Sight Prayers. Um, if you feel like you have a little bit of leeway, though, I would say build your Holy Sight and then build a shrine as well, so that way you can start producing missionaries as soon as you found a religion. Um, but those are the sources of great profit points, and now let's talk about what happens once you actually found your religions. So let's go ahead and talk about choosing our beliefs. So there are four types of beliefs in Civilization VI. We have Follower Beliefs, Founder, Enhancer, and Worship Beliefs. And you are able to choose one of each of the four types. Um, so upon founding your religion, you are immediately able to pick your Follower Belief. Um, you have to pick the Follower Belief like immediately upon founding religion. And then you get to choose from one of the other three types um, upon founding. And then once you've, you know, you've found it and you've picked the first two beliefs, you then use Apostles and their uh, Evangelized Belief ability to pick the other two beliefs. Um, so let's start off with follower beliefs. Um, so follower beliefs are beliefs that um, benefit any city that follows this religion. Um, so say you spread, you know, like your religion to England or something like that, then England and all the cities that England has your religion, England is going to be getting these benefits as well. Um, so we have choral music, um, which provides shrines, uh, which makes it so that shrines and temples provide culture equal to their faith output. Um, I find this one to be really good if you if you want to go for a culture game. Um, it is a little bit risky though if you if you spread your religion too much. Um, so if you're going to go for choral music, I wouldn't recommend spreading too much, at least not to other religious civs, um, because then they're going to be getting a lot of culture and then they're going to have high domestic tourism, and that's bad if you've uh, watched uh, our, our 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 culture or victory in depth video. Um, and I, one thing I forgot to mention is th these are not all of the follower beliefs. These are just some of the ones that I find to be particularly useful. Uh, so yeah, choral music in short. Um, I would get it if I'm going for culture. And if I'm going for culture, I probably would not try to spread uh, my religion too much to religious civs. Um, people that aren't going to have holy sites that like aren't going to be affected or that aren't going to gain too much from this. And, you know, that's perfectly fine. Um, but just be careful who you spread your religion to whenever you're running choral music. Um, we also have work ethic, which provides plus one percent production per follower. Um, this one can be good, uh, simply in the fact that it's percentage based. So if you're going for maybe like a science game or something like that, and you want to use religion as well, I would recommend work ethic. Um, and then I would spread my religion as much as I can because uh, you just want as many followers in as many cities as you can get because that's just going to help you. And then you know if you have a lot of high pop cities, maybe you have like 15 followers, or you know you have like 20 pop and you have 15 followers, then you're going to be getting additional 15% production in that city, which is that's that's pretty insane. So uh, work ethic can be good. Um, it's not really good in the early game, but it really can show like its strength in the late game, uh, provided that you're able to keep your religion, you have high population. And the last one I wanted to mention is Zen Meditation, which provides plus one amenity if the city has two or more specialty districts. Um, so Zen Meditation can be good, especially if you're going for, like, you know, religion and domination, because getting plus one amenity and, you know, hopefully you'll have two specialty districts in most of your cities, um, so that can give you a lot more amenities, which will help combat war weariness, or if, you know, you're just playing a regular game, um, just having that, mu that many more amenities can help make your cities happy or ecstatic, and as we learned from our amenities in-depth video, um, that's a very good thing, because that'll provide a lot of bonuses to your yields, um, so Zen Meditation can actually be quite useful as well. 
Uh, moving on though, let's talk about founder beliefs. So founder beliefs benefit only the founder of the religion, so hopefully that's you. Um, and some ones that I just wanted to mention are cross-cultural dialogue, which provides plus one science from every five followers in other civilizations. Um, that's kind of like the, the the bread and butter for going uh, religion and science. Um, we also have world church, which provides plus one culture for every five followers in other civilizations, which is, you know, kind of the one for religion and culture. Um, the other two that correspond to these, the one that give uh, plus one science from every campus that, that's in um, other civilizations that follows your religion, um, that one is pretty good, and I believe there's one for theater squares as well, but I don't know the name off the top of my head. Um, but I do find myself picking, picking these two over those anyways. Um, so a few more that we have, we have church property, which provide plus two gold from each city that follows this religion. Uh, note that this doesn't have to be in other civilizations, it's just every city, like, in general. Um, we also have tithe, or I don't know if that's the proper pronunciation, but it provides plus one gold from every four followers of this religion. So, uh, church property and tithe, I think, are interchangeably good. I've never, I've not been able to decide which one I like better. I think, I think I like church property better, um, just because it's not reliant on how many followers there are. Um, so theoretically, if like cities have more than like 12 pop, then tithe could be better if assuming that all of them follow your religion. Um, but for the most part, I think that, uh, I think that church property is, is a bit of a better one. And both of these are really good if you're going to go for that, um, that religion and domination, um, game, just because that's going to help you keep your gold output up, especially if you're able to spread to a lot of cities that can get you quite a bit of gold. And it's, it's actually useful for a lot of victory types, just because having gold is kind of like universally, uh, useful. So I, I would recommend both church property and tithe. Um, I'd probably recommend church property over tithe though. And the last one we have is pilgrimage, which provides plus two faith from every city that follows this religion in another civilization. Um, so pilgrimage is another really strong one. This is, if, if you're going for a religious based game, I would highly recommend getting uh, pilgrimage as, as your founder belief, uh, just because this is going to allow you to get a ton of faith, like extra faith. Um, even if you can just convert like one neighbor to your religion, that's going to be getting you, you know, maybe 20 or more extra faith per turn. And that can just help you spam out missionaries. It's, it kind of helps you snowball in a way into a victory. Victory. Uh, so I would definitely recommend Pilgrimage as your founder belief if you are going for a religious victory. Next up we have the Enhancer Beliefs, which also only benefit the founder of the religion, so uh, just a, f a few of the ones that I wanted to mention are Crusade, which provides plus 10 combat strength in your enemy cities that follow this religion. Um, this is the extremely good one if you want to go religion and domination, because plus 10 combat strength in your enemy cities that follow this religion are going to give you a huge, huge advantage. Um, and it's 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 really, if you want to go for religion and domination, this is the way to do it. Definitely, 100% all the time, pick up Crusade if you're going religion and domination. Um, if you just want to be a little bit more defensible, maybe you want to turtle up, you could go for Defender of the Faith, which is pretty much the same thing, except it's near, uh, f uh friendly cities that follow this religion. Um, it's, it's a lot more defensive, and Crusade is kind of like the offensive counterpart to it. Um, so either of those beliefs are quite good, um, as, as your enhancer beliefs. Um, we also have Holy Orders, which I would definitely, definitely recommend if you're going for a religious game, but, because it makes it so that missionaries and apostles are 30% cheaper to purchase. Um, and this is incredibly good, especially because, um, like, the cost of missionaries and apostles continue to go up as you buy more and more so having holy orders is going to make it so that you don't um you don't take as much of a hit whenever you're buying all of your missionaries and apostles and it's going to allow you to buy a lot more a lot faster so i would 100 percent recommend holy orders um if you're going for a religious game um if you're maybe a little bit less experienced with religious gameplay, um, I would recommend uh, Monastic Isolation, which makes it so that you don't lose pressure from losses in theological combat. Um, just because if you don't really know what you're doing, you know, with religion, maybe you're a little bit newer, I would recommend Monastic Isolation because one of the worst things can be if you're losing a lot of, like, missionaries to theological combat. Um, and then, you know, your religion is really suffering in a lot of the surrounding cities. Um, you know, probably pick up Monastic Isolation because it'll just kind of help you out. It's a little bit of like a buffer. Um, we'll talk about exactly what happens when you lose in theological combat a little bit later. Um, but as I, as I said, if, if you're a little bit less experienced and, you know, you're not 100% sure what you're doing, I would recommend Monastic Isolation. If you're a little bit more experienced, though, and you're probably not going to be losing apostles or missionaries, then I wouldn't pick it up. And lastly, we have the Worship Beliefs, um, which unlock a unique building that can be constructed in any following city. So any city following the religion, I know I worded that a little bit funky. Um, so just some of the ones that I think are the best. Um, the Mosque uh, provides plus three faith, and it also makes it so that missionaries and apostles gain plus one spread charge. Um, if you're going religious uh, for a religious victory, I would highly, highly recommend the Mosque. Um, just because getting plus one spread charge can be super good. It's just, it's going to make it so that you don't have to buy as many missionaries and apostles. And 
Um, well, the, the the less missionaries and apostles you have to buy, the better you are going to be off um, in a religious game. Um, so also for religious games, um, you could get the synagogue, which provides plus five faith, um, just because if you're able to get a lot of those, that can get you a lot of faith per turn, which can help, uh, which can help it make make it so that you can afford your missionaries and apostles. So combine that with holy order, and you'll be able to get missionaries and apostles like quite easily. So mosque and synagogue, both for a uh, religious game. And then if you're going for science, um, I would definitely recommend the Watt because it provides plus three faith and plus two science. Um, so if you have, you know, a lot of cities, you could maybe get, you know, an additional like 20 or more science per turn um, from having Watts, assuming that you have, you know, like a, like quite a few holy sites. Um, and that's that's definitely not inconsequential. So the Watt can be good. If you're going for science, I would definitely recommend getting the Watt. So now that you've earned your great profit, you've founded your religion, and you've chosen your beliefs, let's go ahead and talk about how we can spread our religion, and let's talk about followers. Um, so before we talk about followers, um, there's one thing that we have to understand, and that's that each city um, has has a given number of pressure points um, towards each religion that are, it, it's a hidden value, but you can reveal it with some mods, and it is these pressure points that help determine what the number of followers are in the city. Um, so the exact formula for the number of followers is that the followers are equal to the population of the city times the pressure points towards your religion over the total number of pressure points in the city. Um, so really, this, this formula is quite simple. It pretty much just means the more pressure points you have, like the higher fraction of the total points you have, um, the more followers you're going to have. Um, and just a few things that we can take away from this. Um, that really, the big one is that there actually is a bit of a purpose to still spreading religion in cities that already follow your religion, just because it's going to you know, increase the number of total points and it's going to increase the number of points that you have. Um, towards you know like the towards the total so it's going to increase the fraction of 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 uh, the points that are yours and it's going to increase the followers towards you and decrease the followers of the other of uh, uh, other religions so it is it is going to make it harder for other uh, for other people to convert the city as well um, so that is just really the the main takeaway from this is that you can keep spreading um, religion in cities that already follow your religion and it's just going to make it a little bit harder for opponents to convert the city um, so now let's go ahead and talk about pressure and how we earn these pressure points. So pressure as in just the religious pressure that comes from cities um, is actually quite weak in Civ 6. Um, but what it is is, you know, it, it distributes on a points per turn basis to all cities within 10 tiles. Um, the thing about pressure that really makes it not that good though is that uh, pressure doesn't depend on population or the number of followers in a city. Um, pressure simply distributes based on what is in the city. So if the city is a holy city, um, it's gonna it's gonna provide plus four pressure to all um, cities within 10 tiles. If this if the city is following and it has a holy site, it's gonna provide plus two to all cities within 10 tiles. And if it's just a city that's following with no holy site, it's gonna provide plus one pressure uh, to every city in 10 tiles. Um, and the reason that this is so weak is because of some other things that provide pl pressure. Um, so other sources of pressure, we have trade routes, which, which provide plus 0.5 to the starting city based on the religion of the receiving city. So, you know, maybe maybe I send a, a trade route to a city that follows, I don't know, Catholicism. Then the city that I sent the trade route from is going to be getting point, plus 0.5 pressure per turn. Um, to Catholicism. So th these are really almost inconsequential. I really think that they actually need a buffer, maybe to like plus two or so. Um, that would be a little bit better without being overpowered. Um, but we also have Moksha, which provides plus 100% pressure to the cities in. Um, and this sounds really good on paper, but really it's still pretty un inconsequential. And Scripture as well, we have plus 25% um, from all cities, and it rises to plus 50% with printing, which once again is inconsequential, just because of um, a reason that we're going to talk about, well, right now. Um, so spread religion charges from missionaries and apostles provide an immediate plus 220 pressure points. Um, <laughs> so 220 as compared to, you know like two per turn that's a little bit ridiculous because you know <laughs> it's it's just it's so much higher and that's a single spread religion charge so if you have like one missionary that has three spread charges that yeah that's going to be 660 pressure points um that 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 missionary can expend um which would be like some insane amount of turns if you were waiting for pressure to do it. Um, so that's really why pressure is so weak. It's because in comparison to missionaries and apostles, it's just, it's not good. Like, it, it, it takes such a long time to convert anything to get, to gain, like, even a single follower that it's really not worth it. And even if you're running, like, um, scripture, 
So you're going to be gaining plus 50%. That doesn't really impact too much because it's going to make it so that your holy site provides, or your, your holy city provides plus six. Um, ones with a holy site provide plus three, and ones without a holy site provide plus 1.5, which still in comparison to 220, that's, that's like nothing. Um, and in addition to this, um, like apostles, if you can get the uh, the the one that provides um, triple relig or triple spread strength in cities um, of other civilizations, that's gonna be 660 pressure points per spread, which is going to be absolutely in in like insane in comparison to pressure. Um, so that is kind of the unfortunate thing about pressure is that pressure is almost inconsequential in most cases. Um, there is one more source of pressure that I haven't talked about yet, and that is theological combat. Um, so whenever a battle is won in theological combat, all cities within 10 tiles gain plus 220 pressure points towards the winner's religion, and they all lose 220 pressure points from the loser's religion. Um, so this can really show how impactful theological combat can be, because if, if you lose one missionary to theological combat, that's, a, that's, and that's effectively going to mean that every single city that's within 10 tiles of that battle is is going to gain um, like one missionary spread towards the the winner and it's going to lose one missionary spread from the loser so that can be quite impactful it can flip cities um you know like who they're following like super fast um, so you have to be very careful that you don't lose too many theological combat um, like battles um, if you're able to win a lot of theological combat battles though that this can be extremely helpful it can help you flip other civilizations like incredibly fast and it can help buff up cities that you know if people are sending missionaries into your land and you're killing them it's going to make it just incredibly hard for them to convert them later on because they're going to have so many pressure points towards your religion. Um, so theological combat is something that if you're able to utilize it well, I would definitely recommend um, utilizing it. Uh, one thing is though, the reason, uh, I well, I, I would definitely recommend always buying apostles over missionaries. And the reason for that is, um, well, for one, apostles gain promotions, which their promotions can be incredibly helpful. Um, I'm not really going to talk about too many of the promotions, but they're almost all pretty good. Um, but some of the notable ones are the ones that provide uh, triple strength in uh, other civilizations, uh, extra spreads, or plus 20 uh, theological combat strength. So what I like to do is I get one apostle that has that plus 20 theological combat strength, um, and I just use him to be like the fighter. He just goes and he beats up everybody, and, and, and I use that to either spread my religion or defend cities cities that are already following my religion. Um, but the reason apostles are also so much better is because uh, missionaries cannot attack in theological combat, they can only be attacked. And this really sucks because they're they're almost bound to die to enemy apostles, and then it's going to make it so that you're going to have to try to recover cities that flip after that, and it's going to be a nightmare. So I would always recommend building apostles over missionaries. Of course, I'm, like the only exception to that is whenever you're in the very early game where um, Apostles aren't really a thing yet, and nobody has apostles. Definitely, you know, of course, buy missionaries then. Um, but yeah, definitely buy apostles over missionaries. Um, so now let's go ahead and let's go in-game and start looking at some of the stuff we've been talking about. So right here I have a game that I recently finished as Chandra Gupta, and it's it's a little dual size map that I was playing Chandra Gupta against Gandhi, but um it's it's quite good for demonstrating some of the religious stuff. Um so in this game I am the founder of the the, the crab religion and uh, known as Snippy Snippy, and uh, Gandhi is the founder of Hinduism. Uh, his holy city is Delhi, and mine is Agra. Um, so if we hover over like one of the cities, um, all this information comes up. Uh, this information is normally hidden, um, but through a mod, it's called Simple UI Adjustments, uh, we can see it. Um, I don't know if I would necessarily recommend the mod just because it is a little bit buggy, but um, for the purpose of showing the religious stuff, um, it is quite good for that. Um, so if we take a look at the city of Ranchi right here, um, we can see it's following Snippy Snippy. If we hover over, we can see that there are a total of 1,800 pressure points in this city. That's that's the number in the little circle up there. Um, and then it gives a breakdown per religion. So Snippy Snippy has 14 followers and 1,408 um, uh, pressure points. Hinduism has 3 followers and 342 pressure points. And Pantheon, uh, which pretty much just means no religion, has 1 follower and 50 pressure points. Um, so if we were to add up the pressure points from every religion and well, slash no religion that we would get the 1800. Um, so let's see if we can find out where the 14 followers for Snippy Snippy comes from. Um, so we can take uh, uh, Snippy Snippy's 1,408 pressure points, um, divide that by 1,800, uh, that's the total of a value, and multiply that by the population of the city, which is 18, and we will get... Um, 14.08, which of course rounds down to 14, so that's where the 14 comes from. We can do the same thing with Hinduism if we wanted. 
Um, but now let's take a look and look at some of the pressure. Um, so yeah, like that, that's, that's how the followers work. You could probably do that for any city. I'm not going to go through another one just because they're all, they're all pretty, pretty much the exact same thing. But if we take a look at pressure here, uh, this mod does show how much pressure each city exerts as well. Um, it's right below the little circle. You'll see there's the crab and then there's the plus one with the little like wave symbol. Uh, that just means that it's, uh, emanating plus one pressure to all cities within 10 tiles. Um, so if we look at Snippy Snippy, we see it, it has plus 9 pressure points per turn. Um, so where does that plus 9 come from? Um, so let's just take a look. Um, so we have the city of Patna right here, which is providing plus 1 pressure, so that's 1. Um, Agra, which is the holy city, provides plus 4, so that's plus 4 more, so that's 5. Um, this city down here has plus two because we have a holy site right here. Um, so, you know, that rises it, that makes it a city with a holy site, so that provides plus two pressure. Um, so that's up to seven. And then we have the city over here that uh, is just a city, no holy site. Um, so that provides an additional plus one, which is plus eight. And then the ninth one comes from Ranchi itself. So that's where our nine pressure points come from. And then we can do the same thing if we want to look at Hinduism. Um, so Hinduism has plus 8.5 pressure points per turn. Um, so we have the city of Nagpur, which is 1, or is it 2? It's 1. Um, we have Mumbai, which is 2, so that's 3. Uh, is Delhi within 10 tiles? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. No, Delhi's not within 10 tiles. Um, we have another one up here, which is plus 2 more, so that's, what, 5. Um, we have one more up here, which is plus 1. And I'm sure there's, oh, we also have Geneva, which is another plus one, so I believe that's, are we, I think we're up to plus eight. And then if we take a look at trade routes, we can see, um, yeah, right here we have Ranchi to Calcutta. Um, so Ranchi, uh, my city, uh, to Calcutta, which is up here. Um, so it follows Hinduism, um, so that means that the trade route is going to give plus an additional 0. 0.5, which is where the 8.5 comes from. Um, so that's pretty much how pressure and religion works. Um, as I said, you can't really normally see these values um, in a normal game, but if you want to download the simple UI adjustments mod, you can take a look at them and see if you can find out what's going on in your games as well. So now that we've gone through our example, let's go ahead and just do a quick recap of everything we've talked about. Um, so for the first thing, we, uh, we, we've learned that pantheons can help set the direction of your religion. So pantheons are extremely helpful for just kind of deciding what you want to do with your religion, and they can set you in the right direction. So maybe you want to use a pantheon to like just rush your great profit or get some extra great people points, you could do that. If you want to use it to spam out some military units, you could do that. If you want to use it to get a little bit more culture or food, you could do that. Um, so pantheons are kind of versatile, and they're just a nice little, a nice little bit of a push in the right direction for what you want your religion to do. Um, the next thing is that the fastest way to earn your profit is to rush a holy site and then run holy site prayers. Um, so obviously what you could do here is you could just straight up go for astrology right off the bat, put down your holy site immediately once you finish astrology, and then you could run holy site prayers. And in, in most situations, you're going to be guaranteed to get your religion if you do that. Um, it's not always necessarily the best idea because it's going to put you behind in pretty much everything else if you do that. Um, but strictly for getting your great profit, if you're just really focusing on getting your great profit, um, that would be the fastest way to do it. Um, as far as beliefs are concerned, you know, we have our four types of beliefs, um, and you can pick one from each category. Um, so it is important to know that you can only pick one from each category, um, because maybe, you know, you want to get, like, two, two founder beliefs, but, well, sorry, <laughs> you unfortunately cannot. Um, I will put a link to the, uh, the wiki page that has a list of all the types of beliefs in each of their respective categories, um, so that you can l take a look at those and you can see which ones, you know, like, if you pick, uh, if you pick Crusade, then you can't have Defender of the Faith, um, and, you know, so, like, you can just go ahead and look at those, see which ones you can combine, and see which ones you can't combine. So, I'll make sure to, uh, to link the wiki page in the description below so you can take a look at that. Um, but, yeah, the main point there, you can only pick one from each belief category. Um, we also have um, just the main point that pressure is extremely slow at uh, spreading your religion. Um, so, you're, you're very rarely going to be getting more than, like, 15 pressure points per turn. Um, Towards a, towards a religion, which is just going to make it, it it's going to be just a slog to try to get your religion up there, um, which really does suck, um, uh, just especially considering the fact that a missionary or, or an apostle will provide plus 220 points just immediately per spread, um, so missionaries and apostles are infinitely better than pressure at spreading your religion, because pressure is just extremely slow. Um, much along the same lines of pressure, we have that theological combat can be influential in, in converting an entire sieve. Um, so the fact that theological combat, like a, a finished theological battle, um, whenever someone dies, means that um, every single city within 10 tiles is going to gain, 
a, a missionary spread charge towards the religion uh, that wins and lose a missionary spread charge uh, towards the religion or f away from the, or the religion that loses. Um, so theological combat can be extremely influential. It can it can convert a lot of cities at once. Um, it can, you know, provide a huge change in pressure, which can help uh, kind of stabilize some of the cities. That is one thing that pressure can be good for is stabilizing cities. Um, so theological combat, you have to you, you very much want to make sure that you don't lose um, any units in theological combat and you want to try your best to make sure that you can win as many theological battles as you possibly can. And much along the same lines, our, our last main point is that apostles are pretty much across the board better than missionaries. Um, the only thing that's worse about apostles is that they're a little bit more expensive, but um, normally in a faith game, if you have a ton of faith per turn, it's not really going to matter too much. Um, so yeah, apostles get the promotions, you can get some of the good ones like triple spread and other civilizations, you can get the one that gives uh, more spread charges, or the one that provides plus 20 theological combat strength, which then you can use, you could just keep that one guy, don't have him spread, and just have him beat up other, uh, up, uh, like beat up other missionaries and apostles and you can heal them at your holy site uh, that is one thing I didn't mention um, you can actually heal apostles and missionaries at holy sites um, and that's extremely useful for theological combat to know that so uh, that, that that is one thing you you, you can indeed heal um, units in holy sites you can't heal them anywhere else though um, but yeah, so apostles straight up better than missionaries. I would only recommend missionaries in the very early game when you don't have apostles. Or if you're really struggling with faith and you need to buy missionaries, then you could go ahead and do it. Or I mean, I guess if if um, if your opponents aren't really buying apostles or inquisitors to fight your missionaries, then missionaries are a, they're a pretty safe bet. Um, but if if you ever have to fight, um, or if there are any um, like op opposing apostles around, definitely be buying apostles of yourself so that way you can fight and they're not going to just get immediately killed. Um, so thank you everyone for watching, I have been the Saxy Gamer. if you enjoyed the video feel free to like, if not feel free to dislike, if you're looking for more Civilization 6 content feel free to subscribe, thank you for watching, and goodbye.